I'm not vegan. Wait, what? What about all the recipes you make that are vegan? What about all the cookbook reviews you do that are vegan? What's happening? Stick around and I'll explain. Greetings everyone and welcome to, or welcome back to PB with Jay. I'm Jeremy and here on the channel, we focus on all things plant-based goodness from recipe reviews, like I already mentioned, to my own recipes and a lot of other fun stuff in between, including informational videos like this. So today I'm gonna to talk about why I personally don't identify as a vegan, despite the fact that we have a YouTube channel that very much looks like a vegan channel. I'm gonna talk about the reasons why I don't identify that way and what I do identify as. I'm gonna talk about veganism and why some people just have a problem with it. You. And I'm gonna talk about all the ways that I try to encourage people to eat less or none animal products. Sorry, no animal products. I I'm on my first coffee. And we're gonna get into a lot of other stuff. You'll see. But first of all, I'd love to say hello to some of the people who have said hello to us in the comments down below. Susan from Paradise, California. Sharon from Australia. Leanne from Corning, Arkansas. Grandma Katie from Oregon. Jay from Barrie in Ontario. Rose from Connecticut. Arlie from Indiana, Pennsylvania. Alina from London in the United Kingdom. Nikki from Belgium. Kristen from Norton, Virginia. Lini from Oslo, Norway. And Sherry from Our Mighty Network. What is our Mighty Network? Well, it's a community that's kind of like PB with J 2.0. There you get bumped up on our shout out list. You get access to our videos a little bit early, but best of all, you get access to a community of like-minded individuals where nobody yucks anyone's yum and everyone shares information, asks questions. It's a, it's a beautiful place. And you can join for the low, low cost of a crappy cup of coffee a month. Other ways you can support the channel is by leaving a tip down below and that little tip icon thing that's on the page. And you know, we got a merch store. So lots of ways you can help the PB with Jay family if you'd like to do so. Now let's get into what a clear definition of what a vegan is. A vegan is someone who multiple times a day explains where they get their protein from. I'm kidding, but kind of not. For some reason, that's still a thing people don't understand. When someone asks you that, just ask them where they get their fiber from. Now, the technical definition of a vegan is someone who follows a lifestyle and diet that excludes all of animal products and their byproducts. This typically includes abstaining from consuming meat, poultry, seafood, dairy, eggs, and honey. And additionally, vegans avoid using or purchasing products made from animals or animal deprived ingredients such as leather, wool, silk, and certain cosmetic or household items that might be tested on animals. Their primary motivations for adopting a vegan lifestyle is centered around the ethical concerns for animal welfare. It's about the animals. I love animals. I don't wanna see any animals hurt for any reasons, especially eating them. For the record, I don't eat animals or their products, but I'm still not a vegan. Confused? Here's the thing, whether we like it or not, the term vegan has got a certain connotation when it comes to pop culture, thanks to certain types of people. Hello students, welcome to class. Today we're going to be watching some terrible, terrible people. Would you like to see these pieces of <laughs> Let's watch them together. Follow the vegan teacher, she will show you how. There's a lot of reason why people have a negative reaction to the term vegan. Here's a few. Perceived moral superiority. There's a lot of people who think that vegans come off as morally superior or judgmental because of their choices. And that's because a lot of vegans come off as morally superior and judgmental. Would you like to see these pieces of <laughs> Let's watch them together. And when that kind of energy or attitude comes at you, it's hard not to be defensive. When it comes to those kind of situations, sometimes people just can't help but double down and justify what they do and why they do, rather than look at the actual reasons why they do it or consider an alternative. Social discomfort. Veganism challenges social norms and traditions surrounding food. And that can make some people uncomfortable. Especially if you have a large meal to prepare for a group of people and only one of them is a vegan, or if you're trying to arrange a activity where you sit down and eat food as a group and only one of them or a few of them are vegan. Why is that hard for some people? I don't know, because they're lazy and they don't want to have to do extra work or they don't want to have to learn something. I, sadly, I think that's the reason. People be lazy. I mean, to be fair, who wants to branch out and learn something new? Gross. Misconceptions. There are a lot of stereotypes and misconceptions about vegans being super preachy, extreme, elitist, 
making YouTube videos about why you shouldn't eat animals and recipes and stuff. Wait, what? And whether we like it or not, these can lead to negative perceptions of all vegans, even if they don't accurately represent individuals within the community. Is it fair to paint them all with the same brush? No, it sucks. But that's sort of what people do historically. I mean, you understand that, right? That's, that's how also how racism works. Cultural and family influences. Dietary habits are deeply ingrained in cultural and family traditions. And when someone chooses a vegan lifestyle, it can seem like a rejection of that. And that kind of thing can lead to disapproval and tension. This can be especially true at family gatherings where certain dishes at certain times of the year are just the norm. It's what people expect. It's what they look forward to. Family puts a lot of emphasis on food. Fear of change. Change is uncomfortable to most people. And the idea of shifting to a new way of eating could seem threatening or daunting to them. It's easier just to do what you know and what's easy. And sadly, that can manifest as hostility towards certain people. Personal insecurities. Look, the sad fact is that criticizing or mocking vegans is a really easy way for people to deflect attention away from their own dietary habits and lifestyle choices. There are no shortage of memes and mockery when it comes to people who choose to eat a different sort of way. It's a way of protecting their own beliefs by making fun of someone else's, especially someone who is potentially in the minority of a certain type of group. If you understand the mentality of bullying, it's exactly the same thing. A lack of understanding. Many people legitimately just don't understand what veganism is and what it entails. So for them, it's just easier to make fun of it or ignore it. Now stick around to later on in the video where I'm going to give you some tips and tidbits on how to flip the script on some of these challenges when it comes to the perceptions people have of vegans. So let's take a second to get into the mind of the meat eater. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. Most of us consumed animal products at one point in time, and we know why we did it. Largely because it's the cultural norm. We've been told that's what you do. You need meat to be healthy, to get your protein, yada yada. Humans can't survive without eating meat. Spoiler alert, I haven't eaten an animal product in about five years. And, well, yeah. Look, unless you're a sociopath, I don't, honestly believe that anyone actually wants to hurt an animal. That said, I also think that society has become numb to what animal agriculture and animal food production means and is. The sad thing is that when it comes to animal food production, there is just a general lack of awareness of the suffering that animals go through. And when vegan activists confront meat eaters about it, sometimes instead of being horrified by it, they prefer to ignore it and pretend it's not happening. You really think that the planet is going to die because I eat a hamburger? They want to picture a happy farmyard where animals frolic freely <laughs> and die of natural causes, rather than the realities of where their food comes from and how the animals are treated. There's also the cognitive dissonance that comes with it where even if they know how animals are treated, they somehow manage to justify it. They think that humans are superior to animals, and so it's okay because of that. Or they think that, well, if we didn't raise those animals for food, then those animals wouldn't exist. And isn't them being alive better than them not being alive? That one is particularly horrifying and hilarious. My new favorite one is the argument that vegan food kills more animals than animal food production. In order to grow tofu, you have to kill every ground squirrel, every vole, every shrew, every snake, every turtle, every frog, every bird, every rabbit, anything that gets in that bean field. Well, firstly, about 75 to 80% of all the soy that is produced around the world is given to the animal agriculture industries and used as animal feed. In fact, only around 6% is used directly for human consumption. So straight away, if you're worried about animals being killed in the production of soy, then maybe you should stop supporting the industries that use three quarters to four fifths of all the soy that is produced. And of course, there's just people who care more about their tongues than anything else. Yeah, but bacon tastes good. Pork chops taste good. Their taste preference being more important than any ethical consideration. And this is despite the fact that most flavors dissipate after mere seconds. And the ones that do actually linger on your tongue don't necessarily come from animal products. Things like herbs and seasonings and spices and garlic and whatnot. 
Sadly, there's a lot of people out there that think the only way they'll be satisfied by food is if it's meat or cheese or an animal product of some kind. Here's a fun fact. The physical length inside of your body that receives taste is about one inch. And then the food travels through a mile of your intestines and body to break it down. <laughs> when I started shifting my eating habits, that is a fact that stuck with me. And it made me look at food and ask myself, is the inch worth the mile? So I know there's a lot of things on this channel and on my website that use the word vegan. That has more to do with search engine optimization than anything else. Most of the stuff we have here is considered vegan appropriate and vegan friendly. And honestly, I just want to get this information into as many hands as possible. I hope that makes sense. But if I'm not vegan, what am I? I'm whole food plant-based. So then what's the difference when it comes to food? Health. I don't eat animal products, but I also prioritize food that comes from a whole food plant-based source. Things like vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, legumes. I try to eliminate oil since it's a very highly processed ingredient and highly caloric. Am I always perfect in this? Nope. But I tend to try to eat this way about 90% of the time. And the other 10% is just me enjoying indulgences in food that is still considered vegan or plant-based. Just not necessarily whole food plant-based. It melts in your mouth. When it comes to being a vegan, it's really just about avoiding the animal products and that's not hard to do in modern day society. Pretty much every single fast food outlet has a plant-based option and every restaurant does, even if it's just as simple as eating french fries and salad. But when it comes to the more advanced options those places have, it's usually a faux meat product that's been highly processed like Impossible Meat or Beyond Burgers, Chick Un, et cetera, et cetera. Not really things that I would consider healthy, even though I do consume those in a pinch and from time to time. It's a sometimes food that I use either as a moment of indulgence or convenience. Just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. Oreos are vegan. Most candy is vegan. And while I love the animals, the reasons why I started eating this way are the reasons that I think you can help convince other people to do so. But first, let me actually explain how our family eats and the dynamics within it. Cause it's not as cut and dry as you might think. My wife and I are whole food plant-based and we've been eating that way for about five years. Our kids were raised pescatarian, which is the way that I ate before I went whole food plant-based, and they still eat that way from time to time. The meals we prepare at home are whole food plant-based, <laughs> but we don't force the kids to be strict about it in other times. They're old enough that they have to make choices like that for themselves. If they were raised whole food plant-based, it might be a different story. We arm them with the knowledge that we have and hope that they make the best choices the majority of the time. That said, both of our kids have recently expressed interest in giving up at least dairy for a certain amount of time to see if they notice a difference in, you know, how they feel, their skin, stuff like that. So if you're interested in a video like that, let me know in the comments down below. But as it stands, sometimes because our kids are pescatarian, we have dairy products or things like fish end up in our grocery cart. And because of that, I can't claim that I'm a vegan because some of our money, unfortunately, still goes towards those industries. And as I say that, it makes me feel really sad and horrified, but we also just don't want to create an environment in our home where we force things upon our children. When it comes to being whole food plant-based, that is a choice individuals need to make for themselves. If you disagree with that or think less of me, I totally get it, but I'm also not gonna get into an argument with anyone in the comments down below about the way our family works and the choices that we make. If that makes you feel like you can't support us or our channel, that really sucks. But I get it, you gotta do you. I'm not gonna yuck your yum, but I also hope that you just kinda understand that we're human beings and our family is on a journey like other people are. All that being said, now let's talk about the ways that I think are best to help convince people to eat less or no animal products. The reasons that I eliminated animal products from my diet are selfish ones. I wanted to live longer and be healthier and I wanted to help the planet so that my kids, and if they have kids, have a place to live for a long time without it being a, a gross, awful place to live, which is potentially what we're heading towards if we don't change our ways. All that to say, it's personal to me. It's, it's tangible. It's something that I can actively see and be involved in. I can see the change in my own health. I can hopefully see the change in the environment and my impact. 
When it comes to the weight loss, I literally lost half my body weight shifting over to a whole food plant-based diet. If you want information about that, I have a video in the description down below that you can check out. I don't wanna get into a tangent about the environment because I recently did a video on that that I'll also link to down below that will arm you with lots of information that you can share with others if you want to. The best way that I like to encourage others is simply by not having a specific agenda. I like to listen to people and their problems and when I find a little window into something that I can help steer them towards when it comes to eating plant-based that helps either their health or the environment, I take advantage of it. I like to make it nice and organic, almost as if it was their idea that we started talking about it. I'm sneaky like that. Look, humans are inherently selfish, so take advantage of that. It's not that they don't care about animals, it's just they have a hard time caring about the animals they don't see or the act of turning them into food that they don't see, or the actual finished product that lies in front of them, which very rarely resembles any form of animal. It's really easy for them to just ignore where their food's coming from and go along with their day. You'd be surprised how many young children don't actually understand that they're consuming a living thing. Well, not a living thing, it's dead now, but you, you know what I mean. But when it comes to issues with people's own personal health, whether it's diseases, or weight gain or any of the other myriad of issues people could have, that's a personal thing they do understand. The issues with the environment are sadly becoming clearer and clearer as the years go by, although a lot of people like to ignore that as well. And hopefully we can encourage people to shift those things as time goes on. So if you can't get people to care about animals, that sucks, I get it, but get them to care about their own health and the environment that they live in things that are tangible, that they can see, that are personal to them. Now let's go back to that list I mentioned earlier. That was that whole list of reasons of why people don't like vegans. And let me give you some tips and suggestions on how you can help with that. So when it comes to the social discomfort, just, I mean, just be easy to be around. Bring your own food to places. If you're gonna meet somebody at a restaurant that's like a social environment, just eat before you go there and assume that the best you're gonna have is maybe French fries and salad. Or, be proactive and call the restaurant in advance, let them know your dietary restrictions and see if they can help you out. If you give those kind of people a heads up, they greatly appreciate it and usually they wanna help you out. They like to take your money. So if you offer them an opportunity to do so, they'll do it. But also just don't make your entire identity exist around what you put into your body food-wise. If people approach you, you 100% have a license to discuss it, but nobody wants an unsolicited lecture. Find opportunities where they present themselves, but don't be that person that no one wants to be around. When it comes to the misconceptions, just don't be a preachy elitist. Come to any conversation about your choices with an open mind. Try to see where the other person is coming from. Most of us did not start off being vegan or whole food plant-based, and we went through a journey ourselves, and so try to see where they're at and just offer advice and things that can help them along their way at their own pace. And if they're just not into it at all, don't yuck their yum, but also don't let them yuck your yum. Be respectful, be a nice human being. It's not that hard to just be nice. When it comes to cultural and family influences, this is a tricky one because so much of our family get togethers tend to be focused around food. So try to shift that. Make it less about the food and make it more about your time together in whatever way you can. The best thing you can do is just bring your own food with enough for others to try if they'd like to. Honestly, bring more than you think others will eat because I've been in those situations where I brought enough for my family and a little bit extra and we didn't have enough to eat because everyone wanted to sample the vegan food. Worst case scenario, you can pack that stuff up and have leftovers the next day. If your family starts asking you questions about it, take a beat to figure out if they're just trying to attack you or if they're generally curious. If they're trying to attack you, just shift the conversation away because no one actually wants to shift if they're not ready to do so. Or they're looking for little holes to poke at you because of some meme or joke they heard. If they're generally interested, have an open dialogue, but don't force it. No one wants a TED talk at a family gathering. When it comes to personal insecurities, if someone's trying to mock you or make fun of you for your choices, shut it down quickly and politely. Ignore it if you need to, walk away if you must. As long as you're not trying to force them to do what you do or eat the way that you do, there's no reason that they should feel attacked. That's their own crap. Just accept the fact that some people are never going to see things a different way. And that sucks, but that's the world we live in. 
And when it comes to a lack of understanding, when people are legitimately curious, engage them, meet them one-on-one, -on -one. don't be judgmental, answer their questions, and try to lead them towards other, you know, literature or movies or videos like this that can help them get a fuller understanding of just what veganism or eating whole food plant-based or any other permutation of that is all about. Help fill in the gaps of their knowledge and inspire them to dig deeper. So while we are not a vegan channel and I don't identify personally as a vegan, I'd like to think we can nicely coexist. We're on the same team, you know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments down below how you personally identify and the choices that you've made that have brought you to there, where you're at on your journey and maybe where you wanna end up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so to get more videos like this. Hit the like button so other people can find this video on YouTube as well. And if you wanna stick around for a little bit longer, YouTube thinks you would like this video right up here in the corner, right here. I know, you're thinking about it. You're like, do I have to do that thing I was thinking of doing right now? Or do I have a few more minutes to watch another one of these videos? I think you do. <laughs> Thanks.